So, uh, I don't know whether you had already the possibility to see the uh, current uh, Mission Impossible movie, but uh, the left one uh, stars in it together with, with Tom Cruise, but I come to that one a little bit later. Um, clearly, sustainability defining our future products has several dimensions. I mean, very clearly it means new vehicle concepts. Um, I will talk about not only replacing the drivetrain, not only replacing the combustion engine by electric drives, but by developing completely new architectures with new materials. It's about uh, a new production concept that comes with it. It's about building cars in a completely different way than we do today. And it is obviously about electrification, an issue that is very high on the agenda with all the industry, uh, with all the car makers. But it also affects the way we organize our processes, the way our employees work. It's about design at the end of the day, specifically for a premium car maker like us. And it is about new customers and new services that we want to approach. So let me explain this based on the products uh, that we produce and which we put on the market. The first step in 2008 was the electric mini. This was basically a test device, a normal mini uh, with a retrofitted electric drivetrain put into it. We made 650 of those and tested them in many places around the world, in California, in the UK, in the Ostkos region, in Berlin, in Munich, in China, in Beijing and Shenzhen, in Tokyo, and in other places. It was the idea to get people test drive electric mobility and provide us with their feedback on what do they like, what do they hate, what does work, what will motivate them, what keeps them from using electric mobility. The second vehicle, one that goes on the road today, which is going to be part of the electric vehicle fleet for the London Olympic Games, as well as the Electric One series, the so-called Active E. This is a car which contains the entire drivetrain of our future series products, one of which you see on top, which is the BMW i8. So you will see regular products from BMW on sale as of next year, the i3 and the i8. So the Active E's role is to test all the communication options and some new technology features uh, on the road before they go into serious production. The big challenge for us, and this is, I think, what is something where BMW has a specific focus on, is dealing with the weight challenge. The electric mini is a 1.5 ton mini. The Active E is a 1.7 ton one series. That is too much. That means we need more battery for moving a mile than is good. And this also means that we need more electricity to travel that mile than is the most efficient way. Therefore, our ambition was to completely compensate the system-related additional weight of the electric drivetrain by other measures. And if you see that the battery for an electric car is about 300 kilos of weight, it is quite a challenge to get that out of the car somewhere else. We did so by developing what we call the drive drive concept, uh, which is unique for the upcoming BMW i products, as we call them, i being a new sub-brand for BMW, which will comprise all the vehicles which are defined by the electric drivetrain. So some of you may know the M products by BMW, which are the very sporty, the very Kawum uh, vehicles. These are those who are defined by their electric drivetrain. Carbon fiber, or more completely, carbon fiber reinforced plastic has a lot of advantages. It is 30% lighter than aluminum and 50% lighter than steel. It has even better crash uh, uh, capabilities uh, than the aforementioned other materials. It has just one big advantage, disadvantage so far is that it has never been used in serious production of cars. It was confined to very expensive sports cars, to small components, and to things like aircrafts and so forth. So taking it out of this niche and getting it into mainstream production, making it economically viable, was a big challenge that we tried to tackle and where we are confident that we made it. The carbon fiber components you see on top here, this is what we call the life module, basically the passenger compartment, which will be fully made of this material. The chassis on the lower side, which we call the drive module, is 100% 
full aluminum, and it contains the battery and the engines. So kind of the architecture is like chassis and body, uh, like you knew it in the old days, but obviously in order to utilize a completely new uh, approach of car making. As said, these are our two products. On the right, the BMW i3, which is about the size of a one series, a four seater, uh, designed specifically for the use in inner cities. It is an urban vehicle with a range of roughly 160 kilometers with one battery charge, which will come in a pure battery electric version or with optionally, in addition, a so-called range extender uh, that will allow you to get home if uh, you get uh, stranded somewhere with a depleted battery. The BMW i8 is a plug-in hybrid, which will give you less than four seconds acceleration to 100 kilometers with less than four liters of consumption. So it combines a small three-cylinder combustion engine with an electric drivetrain. That's the Tom Cruise company car that I already mentioned. Um, as you can see, between i8 and i3, there are a number, lot of numbers left, so you can imagine that if this is successful, there are going to be other models to follow, which are going to complete this pretty, let's say, stretched range of products. Not to forget, another iconic British brand, uh, Rolls-Royce, which is part of BMW. At the moment, this car is on a world tour. It has the same role like the Mini E or the BMW Active E. It is about testing customers with an electric car. Rolls-Royces and specifically Phantoms normally are driven on an average for 40 kilometers. So it's not a long-range car because you have your helicopter for long ranges. <laughs> um, so we are at the moment approaching some of our dearest customers, which we know all personally, uh, in order to have them test this. And uh, once this tour is completed, uh, this will feed into our decision and how far also for the Rolls-Royce brand. Uh, there is a case for electrified vehicles and there's a good, pretty high likelihood that we are also going to move into this direction of plug-in hybrids, for example, for the pinnacle of automotive luxury. By the way, this one car was the car with the biggest press coverage of the entire Geneva Motor Show in 2011 in the United States and in the United Kingdom which is quite an achievement for a car with a production volume of one. <laughs> so coming back to the BMW i models, it is our target to uh, set new standards also in the production of the BMW i series products. 50% less energy, 70% less water, and to produce these vehicles 100% with renewable energies. So the wind power plants uh, is just being built uh, in plant Leipzig but very clearly, the final assembly of the vehicle is just the smallest part of the overall en energy balance of these cars. We have been, and I come back to your question, we have been searching new partnerships for pioneering carbon fiber. We have been founding a joint venture with SGL Carbon, and together with them, we are manufacturing the raw fibers in Moses Lake in the state of Washington, where you have abundant water power at very low prices. Then it is cast it into the uh, vehicle's components in Bavaria and Wackersdorf and Landshut, and then it gets into final assembly in Leipzig. By that way, at the end of the day, we think if we include, for example, also use of renewable energies for driving the vehicles, that overall, at an overall balance, this can be much more sustainable driving than everything we know today. Finally, very clearly, this is beyond the car. We have new demands on flexibility in how people want to be mobile. People do not necessarily want to own vehicles. They want to be able to use them. We have more restrictions in many places, and we have spreading urbanization. So we respond to that by new offers, additional offers in terms of, for example, intermodal route planning that includes public transport and going by foot. We combine and work together with providers of public transport. Obviously, this is in an initial phase, but this is a way we are going to move into. Secondly, for electric vehicles, you need even more services than for the normal ones. You want to know where can I charge, is this charging spot available, can I reserve it, etc., etc., etc. So we are also going to partner in order to be successful in this. And very finally, we have BMW iVentures, which means establishing 
new companies with new offers like Drive Now or a car sharing system which we operate together with the sixth car, uh, car lease company, My City Way, which we have, uh, have a share of that's located in New York so far, where you can really get real time information on your iPhone, including even the cameras of New York City, where you see this is how traffic looks like. And finally, an innovation here from London, Park at My House, where you can purchase the right to park in somebody's courtyard at a price that is defined by a kind of auctioning system. So in that respect, as you can see, stepwise and gradually, we move beyond our core business. We expand into services in order to be successful with products that are pretty different from anything else that we have been making so far as BMW. Thank you.